Welcome to this episode of On the Bench. I'm Chris Nee hosting today. It's me and Zach. We're here to talk a little Legacy Weekend. It should be a fun time here at Florida State this weekend. Uh, a lot of work on the 2024 recruiting class is about to happen this weekend. Before we dive into that, as always, we're brought to you by Chattanooga Whiskey. Give it a try. Let us know what you think. Uh, it's funny. A good friend of mine, I walked into his shop the other day and he told me it's arguably his favorite current whiskey. And he's a big fan of the pod. So it's pretty cool that the two things have come together. I didn't even know that beforehand. But uh, Brendan vouched for it on the group chat that we had the other night where we talked about spring football starting and whatnot. And I have not yet had it myself, but I intend to at some point in the near future. Anyways, on to recruiting. Here we go. All right, Zach, Legacy Weekend. What exactly does that mean? Yeah, so legacy, right? That, that means that former players are coming to campus and not just any former players, some big time names, um, former Heisman winner and national championship winner, uh, J or Jameis Winston, two former defensive backs that are now some of the highest paid defensive backs in all of NFL history, Jalen Ramsey and Derwin James, and then some other guys like Cam Akers, Jermaine Johnson, Kier Thomas, um, and, and even more. We, we've got a full list up on those two for seven. If, you, if you've been following along, you you know who those guys are, but just wanted to name a few guys, the headliners, I, I should say, of the weekend. And, and you know, Legacy Weekend means that uh, those guys are going to be around campus. They'll be doing some other stuff um, at FSU, like the baseball game. Um, they'll be in attendance for that Friday evening game. Um, and I think there's a good likely chance, I think Jameis Winston's throwing the first pitch, or that's been yep. um, thrown out there. I believe that's so, the expectation. Yeah. And then, you know, Buster Posey's throwing the first pitch on Saturday. So not just uh, former FSU football players, but also some some baseball legends in town as well. With, like, you know, with Jameis Winston there, because he obviously did, did both at FSU. So just going to be a huge weekend um, to have, you know, about over three dozen uh, quality, you know, targets in the 2024 and even 2025 classes on campus um, alongside those uh, Seminole legends. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this weekend. I think it's cool that the guys that are coming back are relatively recent guys for the most part. I think that's a positive. When you're dealing with recruits, you know, obviously somebody like myself have been around this for 30 years. So I think about guys from the 80s and the 90s, but we recruit some recency bias kind of comes into play. So having a guy like James, having guys like Derwin and Jalen, Cam, Kier, I think that's a solid group for the guys who are coming onto campus because we got to remember a lot of them are 15, 16, 17, 18 years old. So you know, their, their history of FSU doesn't quite date back as far as most. And I think the other cool thing about this weekend is that, you know, any kid that's going to FSU to play football, their ultimate goal is playing the NFL. Those are the guys they look at and they want to be like that. So I think it's kind of cool for them to have that moment of dealing with those guys. And sometimes some advice from a guy like Jameis who put in a ton of work to get where he got and became number one overall pick after being a Heisman winner. I, I think that carries a lot of weight with young men. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think it should be a good time uh, to lay out the map a little bit for people. Kids are going to be coming in on Friday and Saturday. Technically, the event is Saturday, but we've got a lot of kids that are going to do some two-day visits here at FSU. And that's always a good thing. The longer you can have a kid on campus, they're going to have a chance to see some practice on Friday. If they're here on Friday, you know, that's a uh, positive. That's another opportunity for them to kind of take things in. It also allows them to be kind of uh, relaxed with the coaching staff, have some time with them. If they're here on Friday, they'll be able to sit in on positional meetings, potentially, you know, they'll have some time one-on-one -on -one with coaches. And because as you referenced, three dozen or so kids is what we're expecting roughly. It'll probably exceed that because you usually have some walk-up type, but in general, I think the number that they're aiming for is 36 to 40 ish. Uh, that's a good number. It's a good quantity, but it's not an absurd number where it kind of limits the ability for position coaches and Mike Norvell and other members of the staff to have some individualized specific time with each and every individual kid that they're truly targeting who's going to step on campus this weekend. So get into it. Who are you most looking forward to seeing step on campus this weekend? Yeah, and I'll, I'm going to tie this into kind of some of the legacy stuff too. So um, you, you get some of your biggest commitments back on campus, four-star quarterback, Luke Cromanhawk a leader of the class. He gets to be around a former FSU legend, Heisman winner, number one overall pick and quarterback Jameis Winston the entire you know time he's there. I just think is going to be awesome. Um, he's talked about it before that that he's excited to, to see Jameis this weekend um, and our conversations leading up to this event. So I think that's going to be really cool. Um, and then, you know, on that same note, Cam Davis, FSU's highest rated commit, five-star running back. Um, he's being pursued by a bunch of other schools because he's very talented well, this allows him the experience to, to be around a guy like Cam Akers, 
who out of high school resembles Cam Davis a lot. They both played quarterback in high school. They both were absolute studs, five-star running backs, and then you know decided to make the decision to come to Florida State. Um, obviously, Cam Davis hasn't signed yet, but you know that's his intention as of right now. Um, so that'll be a really cool uh, thing. And, and you know we've been told that Cam Davis is a big fan of Cam Akers. Um, so that'll be just you know another aspect to why that's such a cool thing for for Cam to or for both the Cams, I guess, to link up this weekend. Um, and then there's just some absolutely m- massive targets for Florida State going to be on campus this weekend. Um, like we said, three dozen or so we're expecting. Um, and all these guys, like I'm I'm running down the list right now, all of them are legitimate like targets or fringe targets. Like there's not a lot of guys you can point to and mean like, why is that guy here? Like. This is an elite of the elite weekend, something we haven't seen at Florida State in a long time. FSU did something like this last offseason, but it just didn't carry as much weight with all the momentum that's around you know, Tallahassee right now. Um, they got some former players on campus last year. I think it was like Jay, Janarius Robinson, Josh Kando. Um, yeah, P.J. Williams was here because I ran yeah, into so him. Some of the, there were some yeah. others. So like, like there were still some solid guys on campus, but like this is a different level of, of talent both in the recruiting side and also like the guys that are coming back. Um, it, it's just really impressive um, to name a few guys that I'm most excited to see as, as far as the targets, I guess a receiver, I think that FSU has a really good shot with uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, four-star James Madison, and he'll be on campus. Another guy that I think they have a good shot with four-star receiver BJ Gibson out of um, the state of Georgia. He's a, a an impressive prospect and he also plays baseball and he'll get to be around some of the baseball festi- festivities as well. He did that on his previous trip to Florida State. Um, five-star tight end Landon Thomas back on campus, the Georgia commit, former FSU commit way back when um, in his freshman season. He you know, obviously decommitted and then uh, flipped to Georgia later on, but um, Landon Thomas keeps showing up. He made that trip to FSU in January and we back again this weekend. I don't think there could have been a better you know, time to bring him back on campus than, than Legacy Weekend. Um, another five-star tight end in the 2025 class, Ellis Williams. Chris, I know you're a big fan of him. Why is why is yep. it so important that he's making it back? Uh, he's 2025, as he mentioned, but he's just a uber talented, freaky frame, big kid. He might be the best, and I know you'll argue this point because Landon Thomas is special in his own right. He might be, a, be the best talent, tight end that's on the board, regardless of class. And Landon Thomas is phenomenal, and he's unbelievable on film. I just think William's ceiling is absurdly high. The frame is freaky. The athleticism is freaky. The wingspan is freaky. And I also think from what FSU wants from that position, uh, it's about as perfect as it gets. Now, that's not to demean Landon Thomas in the least. They would absolutely you know, love to have Landon Thomas in the fold. And Landon Thomas is deserving of being, I believe, the number one tight end in the country for his class as he is. His film's phenomenal. Um but yeah, they, they've done a very good job of stockpiling talent in regards to getting it on campus from that room. We expect Kylan Fox back on campus down the road. Uh, Hubert Khalees, who's a little bit more under the radar type kid at tight ends, and no one they're hoping to get back in during spring. I think he's playing basketball right now, so that's caused some complications with his schedule. But he has mentioned to me an interest in getting back here, and he's a kid that FSU was way ahead on in regards to the national interest he's now bringing in. So yeah, to add to your point on this weekend, uh, it's impressive. Last year, I felt like someone would showtime, showcase, whatever you call the end of summer event. I forget the exact title we called it. I felt like that was an important culmination point of both solidifying commitments and also kind of figuring out who we're going to pursue here down the stretch from the high school ranks. I think because FSU is in a much better position as a program and from an appeal standpoint to recruits, that this weekend is very important because their ability to get higher level talent on campus earlier and for a second, third, fourth, or fifth visit in some cases, I think it drives home the point of these are some of the guys that they're truly going to be able to go in on. Charles Lester, for example, is a great example of that. They're battling the best of the best for Charles Lester. I think Georgia's probably running number three there. Alabama's probably running number two there. Florida State's in the lead. But they're battling that bunch, and they keep getting him on campus. Things keep improving for this program. This weekend will be a good chance for him to spend a lot of time with the new defensive backs coach on campus. He won't be the only one looking to do that. Jordan Pride, who's currently committed here, that's a primary reason why he intends to come in this weekend. Right now, Florida's doing a good job of trying to flip him away. C.J. Hurd, who is a very solid commitment here, is expected in. He'll have a chance to do that as well. C.J. Hurd's also one of those dudes, kind of like Luke Kremenhawk is, they're going to recruit when they're on campus. So it's nice to have commitments around targets this weekend who are going to put in the work. Camden Fryer mentioned to me when I spoke to him on Sunday 
at the Under Armour Orlando event that he hoped to come this weekend. At that point, he wasn't sure it was definitely on the agenda, but it was appealing to him, especially because of the baseball football crossover aspect for him. He's a kid who wants to play both and can play both. And, you know, Posey, obviously, with baseball, Jameis with both sports, that, that's appealing to somebody like him. B.J. Gibson, who you previously mentioned, and I want to kind of falls into that category as well as a kid that has crossover appeal with both sports. So I, I think it's a positive sign that, one, they're getting numerous commitments back on campus that further solidifies things. They're also getting some of their major targets. Jason Zandamella, who I wrote about today, uh, won a golden ticket on Sunday at Under Armour, playing the Under Armour game this coming year. FSU is in the lead there. He doesn't specifically say that. But they are the favorite. There's a reason there's a 247 crystal ball from Steve Wilfong for him to FSU. FSU's done a phenomenal job there. He's very close to Lucas Simmons, and he likes Alex Atkins a great deal. And FSU likes him a great deal. Probably the best interior offensive lineman in the state of Florida for this class. A uh, kid from Mozambique, former rugby player. Checks a lot of boxes, as I like to say. And then Jonathan Daniels, offensive tackle, who may also end up on the inside, but probably can play right tackle. He's also expected in. FSU's made a great deal of effort there. He's a kid that Mike Norvell took the helicopter over to see in January. He's built a relationship with Alex Atkins. He feels like FSU is a place that's a lot like home. FSU, again, crystal ball favorite. So we know how hard it is to get good players in the trenches and that there's only so many of them available. FSU's done a very good job of positioning themselves very well with a couple of in-state guys in those two cases. And obviously one of them is an international kid playing in the state. But they've done a good job with both of those. And it will be interesting to me, at least, how much this weekend goes towards either just solidifying that point or do they go for the close? I don't know if we're at the point where we go for the close because, hey, it's still March 9th on the calendar. So I just don't know. I think that's one of the interesting things about this weekend is how much do we see them push for commitments versus position, positioning themselves for those future commitments? Where do you kind of stand on the idea of the calendar and do you go ahead and do it? Because if you could take a commitment from a kid right now, you're fighting the battle for nine months to keep them committed versus, you know, just positioning yourself, continuing to work, getting them back on campus, going for the close a little bit later in the calendar. Yeah, I, I think it's more likely that Florida State is going to try and make a move with prospects, but not to, to push for commitments this weekend. If you think about it, like you said, it's so far from signing day. And the chance that you're going to get a kid committed right now and he's not going to ever step foot on another college campus from now until December or February, whenever they're signing, is extremely unlikely. Unlikely. If you do that in the summer, if you start taking commitments maybe in July when it's a dead period and there's really only a week in July when they can you know, make visits, a lot of kids will take their summer official visits during June, like four, three, um, even five in some cases, and you know get all their visits out the way and then make their decision and then they've got their season that they they have to um you know have in in the fall their senior seasons and um after that there's you know just a few weekends after their season to, to make visits and that's you know usually um for guys that are uncommitted so to me i think it's just smarter i think that, that everything's trending towards a lot of guys you know making their initial visits in the spring and then taking those officials in the summer and then coming to those decisions in July, if they have to reconsider things maybe in the fall or, or closer to winter time, then they will. But I think that's the more likely scenario. I think that's when you're going to see Florida State kind of push for more uh, commitments because it's just a it's a safer time. You're closer to signing uh, signing day generally. And then also like, you know, after the summer months, a lot of these guys are just mainly focused on football and they're not really paying a yeah. ton of attention to recruiting. They're not going on. I mean, the, the spring gets crazy. Some of these guys are taking 12 visits like to, to all these schools across the country. That's not really something that happens in the fall. So to me, if I were FSU, I wouldn't I wouldn't start taking commits until maybe like early July, um, end of June. Um, I think that's the, the time period. And we've seen FSU do that in, pat, in these past few cycles, right? A lot of their classes built up, you know, that last official visit weekend in June from then on, maybe two, three weeks after that, you see a lot of guys join uh, join the fold. Um, so I think we could see something similar this cycle. Yeah, I agree with you. Having talked to a good amount of kids at the Orlando Under Armour event, and you talked to a lot of kids at the Atlanta event a week prior, the calendar of a lot of spring unofficials narrowed down, summer officials either three to five, making end of summer decisions. That's the more common thing we're hearing from kids consistently. And I just think it does, it does make sense because this day and age, it's so funny. The fall used to be so rabid with recruiting. It's not near as much anymore. Once August hits, recruiting kind of dies to a degree. 
And then there's a surge there at the very end in December going into the signing yeah. period. But it's very calm for August, September, October, and into November usually. So it, it is an interesting dynamic that continues to evolve with the calendar changing that everything seemingly has gotten sped up. But I think the wanting to take a commitment, I don't know that you always want to be the first commitment. And yeah. that's especially one of the things. Guys, so, yeah, especially for guys in this state, right? Like I feel yeah. like we're we're in the state of the most volatile recruiting in the country. Guys are, are flipping a ton. I mean, we saw that a ton these past few years. So like to me, another thing that, you know, I think FSU fans have to remember is I think Florida State's still working out its uh, recruiting board at multiple of these positions, yeah. which guys, you know, when they get to campus, they get to get official measurements on these guys. That's an important part of the recruiting process, the, the scouting process, right? Um, so I think FSU defensive back, for instance, they have like 20 guys that they've offered that they're legitimately in on and probably, you know, half of those guys or more, they probably lead for. Like they could gain commitments yeah. from them if they really, really wanted to push for them. Um, but I think only a handful of those guys are actual, like for sure takes right now. Um, Charles Lester is one that comes to mind is like, that is a guy that if he wants to commit at any point, like you're obviously not going to tell him to wait. But like, I think Florida State could have garnered commitments from some blue chip prospects. Uh, you know, I've heard a few over the past few months, but they've, they've you know, wanted to, to wait a little bit um, to make sure that they're, you know, filling up on the right guys. They've got a, a class already of, of nine commitments. They want to make sure that the, that the other nine to 10 to 11 guys they add that, you know, that's the number that we probably think they're going to add moving forward are, are the right guys. Um, and, you know, they, they have the luxury of doing that, which is not something that maybe they've had in previous years, right? They, they've kind of had the, um, take those early commitments because, you know, the, the bigger schools are going to come calling Georgia, Ohio State, Alabama. Um, we're going to try and flip them late, um, you know, especially if they turn into to big time guys. But FSU's getting closer to that level of recruiting to where you can kind of handpick, um, you know, within reason, uh, some of your some of your targets um, to, to join the boat. And I think that's what we started to see from FSU this cycle. Yeah. To add to Zach's point, the 9, 10, 11, pushing it towards about 20. That's from the high school level. Yeah. That, that's the number we're kind of working with at this stage of the process that we think FSU pushes for. I think another point to make on that entire discussion is that I think Mike Norvell, Derek Ray, the coaches on the field, and the staff that recruits, including support staff, I think they get, do a good job of kind of evaluating where kids sit, like in the sense of where their mind is in the process. Also, they want to get in front of that kid multiple times. They want to have them in person to kind of get to know them. They want to evaluate them in activity, whether at summer camp or an event or during the evaluation period that's coming up here after this open period. So there's all those dynamics at play that I think allows them to construct a calendar where there are guys that are surefire without a shadow of a doubt takes, but there's also a lot of high level targets that they really like. That I think there's a little bit more of that process, the uh, evaluation, both mentally and physically that has to happen before they're ready to give them the green light. So I think that's a very good point. Uh, some other names from this weekend. Just because I want to say it, Butter Tollison, quarterback from out west. He's coming in. He's a 25 kid, number three in that class. At Byer, that yeah, Byer Sinone, sponsored by the Turner Group. You've uh, called dibs on uh, interviewing Butter. Oh, I intend to interview Butter. You know me. I love Bubba's. I love Butter. There's a certain dynamic of name sets that I'm just all about, and Butter is one of those. Um, DJ Pickett, who is a familiar name from an FSU recruiting standpoint, he tweeted recently that he is coming back this weekend. He's the number two ranked safety in the 25 class. Zayden Walker, who's also tied to Jalua Solomon, who's coming in from Shirley County up there in South Georgia. He's coming in. He's the number one ranked linebacker in the 25 class. So really good 25 group. And 26, uh, Hesse Kent, who's from Brunswick, Kanaya Charlton's high school. He's a very talented two-way off, or I'm sorry, tight end, defensive end type kid. He's expected in. I actually talked to him earlier today after Will Fong included him in his preview piece that he's coming in. I think we mentioned a majority of the 24 targets. LJ McCray is another name. I'm not sure if we brought him up earlier. Talented D lineman that we've talked a lot about. Elias Rudolph, a recent transplant from Ohio to Florida. He is expected in. I feel like Zach hit on a vast majority of the rest of them, but if we didn't, we have the preview from Will Fong, top recruiting tar targets for FSU will rub elbows with program greats at Legacy Weekend, which he ran earlier today. And then obviously over the last month, we've been running visit intel VIP pieces and having our running visitor list that has kind of an all-encompassing list of who's coming in. I know Caleb Cunningham's another 25 name that we have on there that we've brought up in the past. Yeah, There's a Mississippi too, yeah. group coming in on Friday that includes Jamonte Waller, 
a rising edge who's getting pretty popular, who I think FSU might pull the trigger on. Ethan Callaway is an offensive lineman who I believe this will be his first visit stepping on campus if he makes it in this weekend, as he's expected to. Uh, Camarion Franklin, Jacoby Hobson, two Mississippi teammates that are expected in for multi-day visits, both big-time kids. Peyton Pierce is a talented Texas linebacker. Actually, he spoke with him this morning to reconfirm he's coming in tomorrow. I'm expecting him to spend a majority of Saturday into Sunday here. I believe he has to get back to Dallas for the Under Armour camp on Sunday. So, you know, there, there's a window of opportunity there with him. Uh, and, hey, Jake Weinberg, best kicker in the country, FSC oh, yeah. commitment. He's also coming in. So, new, new number it, one kicker. It should be a really fun weekend. Um, you know, their recruiting is really impressive at this point. Like, it, it feels like it's rolling. Yeah. Uh, we'll have it covered, you know, from beginning to the very end and everything in between. And then plenty afterwards, we'll have intel. We'll have recaps with the prospects, Q&As. Uh, we'll get as much scoop as humanly possible. We'll have photos. We'll have some video, I presume. It should be a good time. We intend to cover the heck out of it. Um, you know, and then FSU goes into spring break where things should calm down for about 72 hours or so. And then we hope. Yeah, they'll have guys back on campus on the back end of spring break and roll right back into spring practices. And we're going to have a bunch more guys between now and April 15th. Uh, after this weekend concludes, there'll be a consistency of prospects stepping on campus. But April 15th will probably be the next huge event. Now, I say that, and a weekend will probably blow up on us here in between now and then, but that's the expectation going in. Uh, anything else you want to add, Zach, before I ask the last question, the last buyer and own brought to you by the Turner Group? Um, no, I just think, you know, we've covered it pretty well. I'm excited to get out there. I uh, want to see some of these former players and just see how they interact with the recruits. But, yeah, hit me with it. All right. Buyer and own, FSU gets two or more commitments this weekend. This weekend, like immediately from the weekend, not long term. By the time, let's say Monday wraps up, they get two commitments from the weekend. Um, also known it. Okay. Why? I just, you know, usually when when we're doing these kind of like commit watch things, sometimes we're hearing, oh, this guy's coming in this weekend to commit. I have not heard that yet, but that doesn't mean that's not going to happen. I'm just saying that, you know, based on my conversations over the last few weeks leading up to Legacy Weekend, it doesn't seem like an event where they're trying to push guys to commit. I think the recruiting process is about unique experiences. Florida State, when things opened up two years ago in recruiting after the whole you know COVID shut things down for a year and a half, what did they do? They opened up with Midnight Madness, um, and that was a you know it took national headlines because it was something that no one's ever done. Bringing in prospects at midnight just because that's when things opened up officially um, it was something that you know Norvell and, and the staff could sell to those recruits like you were part of that experience. These all these really touted prospects. Well, this is another thing, right? Like other schools have done legacy weekends before and br brought former players to be around recruits, um, but FSU has the, has theirs this year. I haven't heard of any other school doing that this year. Um, so it's you know I think it's going to be a unique experience for these recruits to to take in and. You know, we'll see if it if it reads some commitments. I don't I don't expect any right now. That doesn't mean there's not some in the works or some guy could step on campus, have a, a, an unreal experience, and then just make the decision, you know, on the fly. But um, right now, I'm also known that just because I think um, FSU is more working towards getting some commitments, uh, maybe closer to the summer months. Well said. I, I think I you? tend to agree. I tend to agree with you. I want to buy that they'll get two or more because I think they could get two. Emotional, de emotional decisions could happen because things yeah. will get enjoyable this weekend. Sometimes that happens where you step in the office or you're on the field and doke and you're just like, hey, coach, I want to play for you. And you can't help yourself. That being said, we spoke about it. I think FSU is playing with a slow and steady calendar. And as you mentioned, some positions, I think they're evaluating guys. But, hey, if Charles Lester wants to pull the trigger, we're all for it. So yeah. just saying. And if he does, enjoy it with some Chattanooga whiskey. 111 is supposedly the one that's really good. So <laughs> thank you guys for listening. For me, for Zach, enjoy this weekend. We'll have you covered.